Uh, so this video is the multiple choice questions for the AP Physics exam for the topic of rotation. Uh, so in the first question, a compact disc has a radius of 6 cm, so if the disc rotates about its central axis at an angular speed of 5 revolutions per second, what is the linear uh, speed of a point on the rim of the disc? Uh, so the radius is 0 0.06 meters, uh, the angular speed is uh, 5 times 2 pi radian per second, and the uh, linear speed at the rim is r uh, omega because r is the radius of the of the disk okay and so we substitute and we get 1.9 meter per second which is b uh, so for the second question a compact disk has a radius of six centimeters and if the disk rotates about its central axis at a constant angular speed of five revolution per second uh, then what is the total distance traveled by a point on the rim of the disk in 40 minutes? Uh, so as the question before, the radius is 0.06 meters and omega is 10 uh, pi radian per second. Um, and so the, um, the total distance traveled by a point on the rim of the disk in 40 minutes is equal to V, the linear uh, speed, times T which is equal to r omega t and we substitute and the time is 40 times 60 second and this gives uh, 4500 meters so um, the answer is e uh, so for question 3 an object of mass 0.5 kilogram moving in a circular path of radius 0.25 meters experiences a centripetal acceleration of constant magnitude of 9 meter per second square so what is the object's angular speed? Uh, so these are the given values and the centripetal acceleration is v square over r which is r omega square over r which is r omega square. And so the angular speed is equal to square root of the centripetal acceleration over the radius. And this gives a 6 radian per second. So the answer is c. Uh, so for question 4, an object originally at rest begins spinning under uniform angular acceleration. In 10 seconds, uh, it completes an angular displacement of 60 radians. Okay? What is the numerical value of the angular acceleration? Uh, so the angular displacement is 60 radians and we use the kinematic equation, uh, one of the kinematic equations in angular motion. Okay? And because it started from rest, omega naught is zero. And so the angular acceleration is two uh, delta theta over t square. And we substitute, we get 1.2 radian per second square, which is c. Uh, so for question five, in an effort to tighten a bolt, a force f is applied as shown here. If the distance from the end of the wrench to the center of the bolt is 20 centimeters, and F is 20 Newton, what is the magnitude of the torque produced by F? Uh, so in general, the torque is equal to the uh, cross product of R cross F, right? So uh, this is the vector R, so R cross F, and the direction of um, tau, the torque is found uh, from the right-hand rule. Uh, so the angle between them here is 90, and this is why we can write the magnitude of uh, tau equal to Rf, okay? And we substitute, we get 4 newton times meter, which is d. Uh, so for question 6, uh, in the figure above, what is the torque about the pendulum suspension point produced by the weight of the bob, given, given that the length of the pendulum L is 80 centimeters and m is equal to 0.5 kilogram? Uh, so this is R cross uh, the force, which is mg, okay? And as you can see, the angle between them is not 90, as in this case, but is 30 degrees. So the magnitude of the torque is Rf uh, sine theta, um, which is uh, R is L, the length of the pendulum, and the force is mg, the weight of the bob, and sine theta is 30 and so we substitute and we get 2 newtons times meter which is uh, d
Uh, so for question 7, a uniform meter stick of mass 1 kilogram, this one here, is hanging uh, from a thread attached at the stick's midpoint here. Um, so one block of mass 3 kilogram, this one here, hangs from the left end of the stick and another one of unknown mass m hangs below the 80 centimeter mark on the meter stick. So, if the stick remains at rest in the horizontal position shown above, what is M? Uh, so, this is the case of static equilibrium and the forces, uh, both of them, lie in the XY plane, so they are known as coplanar forces and the torque produced would be along the Z direction perpendicular to the page, okay? Um, so, because uh, the system is in static equilibrium, then sigma fx is zero, sigma fy is zero, um, and also sigma tau z is equal to zero. And so um, the torque uh, produced by this force is equal to r1 uh, cross f1, the angle between r and f1 here is uh, 90 degrees. So r1 cross f1 minus r2 f2. So as you can see, uh, the torque here, uh, its sense is um, counterclockwise, so it's positive. And the sense of the torque here is clockwise, so it's negative. And we substitute, so R1 M1G equal R2 M2G, and so M2 is equal to R1 M1 over R2 equal 5 kilogram, and so the answer is B. Uh, so for question 8, what is the rotational inertia of the following body about the indicated rotation axis here? The masses of the connecting rods are negligible. Uh, so the moment of inertia about this axis, which we call the y-axis, is equal to sigma i m i r i square. And r i for all of these masses here, which is the perpendicular distance from the mass to the axis of rotation, is equal uh, to L for all of these masses, right? And so uh, the moment of inertia about this axis is equal to uh, 4m L square, which is uh, A. And note here that this distance given here is irrelevant. Uh, so for question 9, the moment of inertia of a solid uniform sphere of mass M and radius R is given by I equal to 2 over 5 m R square. So such a sphere is released from rest at the top of an inclined plane of height h length l um, and incline angle theta. So if the sphere rolls without slipping, find its speed at the bottom of the incline. Uh, so in case of the rolling motion, which is the general plane motion of a rigid body, the motion can be considered as a combination of pure translational motion of the center of mass uh, plus pure rotational motion about an axis passing through the center of mass and perpendicular to the plane of the motion. Uh, so this means that the total kinetic energy of the object is a combination of the rotational kinetic energy, which is half I omega square, and the translational kinetic energy, which is half mv center of mass square. Uh, so if we consider the system as the sphere plus the Earth, uh, then the only force acting within the system is gravity, which is a conservative force. And this means that the total energy of the system is conserved. Uh, and so K initial plus U initial is equal to K final plus U final. Uh, so the initial energy here, uh, as the sphere started rolling from rest, is all potential, right? Because uh, its initial speed is zero. And so U initial is equal to mgh. Uh, and then as the sphere uh, rolls, uh, its uh, initial uh, potential energy is gradually transformed into rotational and translational kinetic energies. Uh, until finally, at the bottom here, uh, all of its energy is kinetic energy and the final potential energy is zero, okay? Uh, so we substitute and uh, also for omega, uh, we know omega is equal to V center of mass over R, which is the radius of the sphere. And uh, this gives the velocity of the center of mass is equal to square root of 10 over 7 gh.
So for question 10, an object spins with angular velocity omega if the object's moment of inertia increases by a factor of 2 without the application of, ex of an external torque, what will be the object's new angular velocity? Uh, so if the component of the net external torque about the rotation axis, which we call here the z-axis, is 0, uh, then the component of angular momentum along that axis is conserved. Um, and so we can write that L initial is equal to L final, um, and so I initial omega initial is equal to I final omega final. Uh, and the final moment of inertia is twice the initial, and so the final angular speed is equal to uh, omega initial over 2, and so the answer is B. Uh, so thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you in the next video.